like to call this meeting to order. And good evening. Uh, welcome to the June 7th, 2022 meeting of the Dover uh, School Committee. My name is Interim Superintendent Kathleen Smith, and I call this meeting to order at I have here 534. Um, we hopefully will be live streaming at some point. We're presently experiencing some technical difficulties with uh, DSC TV uh, so that you may re uh, view this remotely but it is being recorded for those of you that see it at a later time. Uh, I want to start with uh, welcoming our new uh, committee member for the Dover School Committee, uh, Goli uh, Zephyr, who has been actively involved. I met her earlier this year when she did a wonderful presentation uh, of the Dover uh, PTO and the support that you provide for the Chickering School and our students there. So thank you for uh, being willing to serve, and I know the committee is uh, excited about welcoming you. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. And thank you. Uh, I'm excited to be part of this group. So at this time, um, we go through a process of what we call reorganization. So you do need to elect a chair and a secretary. So I'm going to call for nominations for a chair for the uh, upcoming uh, school committee uh, session. I'd like Colleen. to nominate uh, Sarah Goodyear. <laughs> Thank you. I second, I second third. that. Third. <laughs> and I have a third. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. And that is unanimous. And congratulations uh -oh. to Sarah Gutierrez Dunn, <laughs> who um, I am so proud to have served along uh, this past year. Uh, you are such a support to all your members, to our joint members. Um, you've really gone above and beyond. So excited uh, for our new superintendent elect and her team to have your leadership uh, with your school committee. So I'm going to hand that over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I um, have been honored to uh, serve as chair this year. Um, and I, I look forward to doing so next year as well. It's an exciting time with a lot of change on the way, and so hopefully I can provide some continuity. So I certainly would have been happy to see the floor <laughs> if anyone else wanted to play this So role. well you got yourself a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So the, the next order of business um, would be to elect a secretary for next year. And I would like to nominate Colleen Burt for that role, if she is willing. Thank you. Sure. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. The motion carries unanimously. Well, thank you very much, Colleen, Excellent. for your willingness to serve in that role. <laughs> Next on our agenda this evening is community comments. We have provided a Zoom link for those who wish to make a comment, but for whom it is not possible or preferred to attend in person this evening. But before I read our community comments preamble, I would ask um, Beth, is there anyone in the Zoom uh, who would like to make a community comment? So there was one individual um, who has been listening to this meeting, and since you mentioned community comments and that you're going to be opening up the floor, they have since jumped off. So um, there is no one in the room at this point except us. Okay. Anyone here who might like to make a community comment? All right. Well, hearing none, um, we will move on to our report from the Dover PTO president, Tinley Gilbert. Tinley, welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hi. It's a pleasure to see you all. Um, my name is Tinley Gilbert, and I'm Still for, I think, one more week, Vice President of the Dover PTO, <laughs> serving under the amazing tutelage of Goalie, oh, yes. um, whose shoes will be impossible to fill, no. but I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> um, and I think we've got some slides here. Yes, I do. Maybe, might be, oh, you probably know where the lines are. Okay, great. Um, some of you are familiar with this because you have kids at, at Chickering, um, or you've been on the PTO before. <laughs> But what I wanted to do is walk you through how we did this year and what our plans are for next year and then answer any questions you might have. If you have questions while we're on the slide, please feel free to just raise your hand. Um, not a problem. Okay, yeah. So we had a really exciting year this year. Um, the way we, as you all may know, the, the three main things we do for the PTO is our curriculum enrichment, which is really a gold standard. Um, I know I, I guess I didn't introduce myself. Um, as My name is Tinley Gilbert. I moved here during the pandemic. 
specifically chose Chickering, Dover, Sherborne, and the high school. I read every curriculum because of the schools. We chose Dover for that reason. And I had learned about the curriculum enrichment program as well from people who had lived here. And I just knew that it was such a special thing that we have. Um, we fund over $34,000 in curriculum enrichment. It's actually, um, it, it says 34,000, but I think our plans for next year are even more than that. We'll talk about that. It's over 30 programs and I have them listed. It's really um, something that we do through kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade. You're familiar with it, author visits, Audubon, um, walks, et cetera. So I'll walk you through some of those. The second main thing we do is classroom and teacher support. You may be familiar that we offer $250 reimbursement to every teacher or specialist at Chickering. Um, they don't all take advantage of that, and we're, we're thinking about ways, we'll talk about this a little bit, but thinking about ways to make that more efficient for them. Um, but in the last year, we gave over $11,000 in classroom and teacher grants, because we also do grants. And you can see that hands-on in the classrooms. Um, we do over $3,000 worth of hospitality events for the holiday luncheon. We do a lot of um, staff appreciation events through our hospitality group, which is fantastic. And then this year we were so excited. We were able to bring back in-person events. Our first in-person event was International Night in early November, and it was packed. I think we had 30 countries represented. I had never seen, being being new during the pandemic, I was like, where'd all these people come from? It was awesome, it was awesome. We also brought back Bingo Night, the Spelling Bee, Bike Safety Day. We worked with Pine Hill this year and did a fifth grade immersion celebration day that Goalie helped us do. Books from the Heart and Chickering Grows and Chickering Cares are also very strong for us as well. You can um, move on to the next one, thanks, Beth. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, look at all the things mm -hmm. that our children mm -hmm. get to experience outside of their regular curriculum. Uh, this is an embarrassment of riches from a mm -hmm. enrichment um, perspective. And I do wanna say a couple of things. We have, especially during the pandemic, a lot of the programs, especially through Audubon, we've kept some of them in place. Um, because it was just easier to do work with authors we know, work with programs we know. But starting about a month and a half ago with next year's CE chairs, we really started taking a deep dive into all these and making sure that we're using our funds most efficiently. Do we need an Audubon every year? Maybe we bring in a different group. So we actually last week met with Pawisset and we're looking how to leverage this amazing farm we have in our own town. Do we have a program there? Do we have them come to the school? So we are, now that we're out of the pandemic, we have a better um, understanding of expenses through these programs. We're all, we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the most efficient way to use these resources since it is the largest part of our budget. But as you can see, and if you have kids at Chickering, mine came home and told me all about the owl and did I know that the owl feather, how soft it was. And so it's really such a special part of our program. Can I ask a quick question uh, sure. about that? Is it, do you wanna? Yeah, go, 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 that? yeah. Um, do the teachers weigh in on that? Because while I hear what you're saying, I know that like the Audubon have specifically trained people that yes. match the Massachusetts yes. standards. So yes, yeah, it is. It is a partner. It's actually one of the best partnerships between parents and teachers, uh, between the PTO and the teachers. So starting in March, I think it was March, and we partner with Deb on this. We go to the teachers and we say, and they actually know how their curriculum might shift and change for the following year. Right. So then we shift and change the curriculum with them. And we would, and they actually have their list of wants and needs. So like, even if we were to bring in Poisset, first grade doesn't want to change anything. They like the programming. They like the person that comes in. It matches their curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't do anything without um, awesome. changing that. And I think it was either, was it fourth grade or fifth grade where they decided that they don't want to use the same author next year. And that frees up for us thousands of dollars right. to think about, okay, then how do we, what part of your curriculum do you want to do? Or for example, um, one of the grades did, oh, it was fifth grade MCAS science review through the Audubon. And the teachers this year were like, you know, that may not be the most, like we can do that with the book. Why don't we take those funds and use them somewhere else? So yeah, mm -hmm. it's really, it's teacher driven. Great. It is. And being new to the PTO this year, I was actually surprised and impressed with the coordination. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good. Awesome. Thanks. Here's just some examples of some science and STEM, some um, cartography on the top left. We've got some animal on the top right, walks on the bottom. It's really special. Can keep going. 
So the next one is the teacher classroom support. And this is really special. You know, we should have brought Christine Atkinson in and we should have shown the video. <laughs> one of the ways that this is utilized is the teachers come to us. So yes, we have, as you see, the discretionary fund where we will reimburse teachers for $250 of their spending. Um, not every teacher takes advantage of it. So we're trying to figure out a better, more efficient way to make it simpler for them. But the teacher grants, I'll give a perfect example. Christine Atkinson is a teacher in fifth grade. She happens to also sit on our PTO. And she created the Atkinson economy in her classroom. And it's a great way to teach kids. They each have different jobs. They can earn tickets, and then they can sit in special chairs. They can do special things. And it's a great way to teach them about economies or economics. So those are some of the ways. You know, we get ergonomic chairs. And I will say that we'll talk about the auction in a minute, but we did solicit from the teachers what more do they want in the classrooms, and we are going to use some of our funds from the auction to make that happen for them. And then community events, support, and outreach. I, I read through this all right, um, excuse me, already. The Bike Safety Day was awesome. It was um, on the 14th, and it was, you know, back, we were back in um, – in business again. So we're looking forward to having even more events next year. There were a couple we had to take off this year. We had to take off science fair. We couldn't because so many had to get pushed off. Then we kind of ran out of space. So we're working on the calendar now so that um, we can do more next year. And the, la um, the last thing I want to talk about is our community outreach. This is a lot of information, and I'm sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I am going to give you one of these, which was our, um, from our auction, and we talk about this in here. Jamie Godfrey runs our community outreach program, and she is a godsend. And in fact, it is a best practice that is going to be picked up by the positive PTO next year. And it is a partnership between the school, the PTO, and different programs within the um, within the neighborhoods. And so for Thanksgiving, doing uh, Thanksgiving baskets, doing clothing drives, doing bookmarks at the to Dover Town Library. Um, my kids went to find theirs. Um, handmade Valentine's cards for the COA, but then other things as well. And then we also do Chickering Grows, which is the program where we have the outdoor classroom. And then we also extend that into the home and you can have those kids sent home with you as well. And it's just a really nice program for kids to learn about outdoor gardening and, and nature. Okay, the next one. I think we're gonna get into the finances. So as you can imagine, uh, you all are dealing with a budget as well. Um, COVID really kind of wreaked a little bit of havoc on some of the fundraising and expenses, right? Expenses are going up. We did a really deep dive, our treasury did. So this is Betsy Police and Julia Cavan and looked into this, what I would call um, seesaw. On a, in a great year of an auction, we can raise a lot of money and then we have a check writing campaign and we don't meet our expenses, but then the, the auction makes up for the budget. So you'll see here that we have a su surplus in auction years and a deficit in check writing years. It's just the way it is. Um, this year we have an anticipated surplus of about $25,000. We had a very successful auction, but we're gonna use that to offset what we think are gonna be, is gonna be a loss next year. But we have other ideas and plans. So if you wanna keep going, we are going to, I wanted to give this to you. Um, this is what it looks like. So this year we budgeted an income of 89,000, but we made 118,000. So I will go into the details of the auction, but the auction made over $70,000. It was amazing. Our goal was, I mean, that's net. Our goal was to net 55 and we made over 70,000. I, I think it's closer to like 75, but mm -hmm. the treasurer doesn't like me to say that. Um, <laughs> our budget expenses were 105 and we came in at 82. So as you can see, we actually came in almost $40,000 ahead of where we thought we were going to be this year which is fantastic. And you, we've walked through the expenses. You can see that the CE is our biz, biggest expense. Um, if you're okay, I'll go to the next slide. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course you can. Let's and I'm just, I'm not being critical. No. I'm just coming from a place of That's right. curiosity. But you guys also have like a rainy day fund. I, right? We do. And I'm just curious, like how much sits in that rainy day fund? Because I see all this and I see how lucky we are. I mean, like we are really lucky and I, I get, I grow concerned about how much is sitting in a rainy day fund because it should be like in the schools, like for kids. So I'm curious, like how you guys decide how much is in the rainy day fund 
And didn't we just sort of like live through the rainy day? Like can we it were get rainier than that. And so like how much is necessary is just my question. So I don't have the exact number for you, but it's kind of set up in our bylaws. So I can get that for you. But unfortunately, and we met with Deb and Jim, was it late March to walk through this um, with treasury? And unfortunately we were, we were drawing down a lot of our rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine, we had a lot of expenses for the auction that was supposed to be the fall, uh, winter of 2020. Right. There was, the money was already out. We didn't get to have the auction or anything. I wasn't even here for that, but this is my understanding. <laughs> and so that really killed us because those auction years really flowed us for the next one. Right. Granted, last year's check writing campaign apparently was great because I think people had money that they thought they'd spend the year before. So we unfortunately pulled a lot of money out of that. And if we don't have additional, well, if we didn't have a successful auction and or we don't, we're doing four more fundraisers next year, smaller, but four more fundraisers next year, to make up for about $20,000 on fundraisers from about three years ago and earlier that you guys used to have. But we don't make as much money on the directory anymore. We don't make as much money on Dover Days anymore. There's just a lot of natural attrition that's happened with our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to bring in other things like a 5K run, an art project for... Um, so to answer your question, we have to keep a rainy day fund. It'd be great right. to have it sitting in the schools. But then there are towns who lose their PTOs because they have no money. So we do. So we would rather think about. I think. Well, how much is it? In, is so, 50? Is it 50 so right we, now? We try to keep um, for uh, almost for expense of a full a year's year. worth of expenses. Full, yeah, normal year. And I think. Well, although we took some of the money from our brain day um, uh, funds, we are close to a year of um, um, expenses still in place. I think so we have again, about I'm, not, I'm not being critical. No, Please no. don't read it no. that way. But is that a best practice? Like a year of, it seems like a lot to me, but I, I honestly have no clue. So I will share with you that in my lifetime, um, I've lived in New York, Dubai, Connecticut, and now here, and I've been on a lot of nonprofits. Yeah. It's always best practice to keep one year's worth of expenses in your because um, in your um, coffers. Now, I think it's slightly less. I don't know, but it's slightly less, which is somewhat normal because we, we don't have the, like we're not going to have an executive director suddenly leave, right? right? Because we're like, we're a PTO. Right. But it is, I'm happy to go back and get some details on Sorry, why it's I the best practice. On the spot. No, it's, but I like, I've been part of, um, I've been part of a library fund. I've been part of a community center, a uh, community cares fund. And we always had, you know, 50 to seven, well, one year's worth of expenses. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, are we, so I would ask a different question, which is, are we investing that pro correctly? Right. So like, are, is it just sitting around mm -hmm. or is there something we could be doing with it? Right. Could it be in a CD? Could it be? And that's, I think that that's an important question, mm -hmm. but I will say, I, we can always, we are fine tuning this, but the, there's not much that the kids are at a loss for. We haven't cut programming we were, right. we're only adding. Right. So if we were, I think when we get to the point where we're like, oh my gosh, we have to start cutting programming. That's when we have to say, wait a minute, maybe we need to go to our rainy day fund. Yeah. That's what I would say. And I'm not, I you know, understand. nobody reads this wrong. I'm not saying the schools are like short on books or anything, but you know, with bringing in reading workshop, I know books are always like a love thing and they're expensive. And you know, if it, I, I, I'm just asking because not many schools, I would think in the state could say, that they have what we have and a year of it in. Right. So I'm just feeling really lucky and want to make sure we're like using it as best as possible. That's a great question. Yeah. We, I was on the phone today with somebody who, uh, regarding room parents mm -hmm. and how to create com stronger community now that COVID, now that we're kind of moving out of COVID or, you know, we'll never get rid of it. So do we take some of those funds and do we put them more towards the room parents and creating community? Mm -hmm. But you, I have to tell you, um, and why we're trying to move away from having these two, like this, every other year by annual auction <laughs> carries so much weight. It's really hard. Yeah. That auction, it's a full time job. Yeah. Um, and so for like three different people. So mm -hmm. we have to assume that there's going to be down years and we're not going to make seven. We're not going to net right. $70,000 right. next year's check writing campaign might only be like 35. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about the auction, I'm just going to, but I'm happy. Thank this you. is, this was our, um, this was, I just thought you guys might like to see it. This is, there's some things about the different, um, about the programs we have in the schools, some of our items, a lot, um, just a lot about Dover, PTO. Is it okay if I move on? Mm -hmm. uh, I just, yeah. Oh yeah. I just have one question. So 
So that may, you might have just answered my question that it's so much work to put on. If it's so successful from, like, why do you do one year that you know is going to be less, well, you're not going to bring in as much by doing a check writing campaign. Right. It's like, why don't you do it every year? That's a great question. And actually, we, we hired an auctioneer this year, and they've done it in the past. And the auctioneer was like, wow, it really seems like your people enjoy getting together. Why yeah, don't you right. do this more often? And I was like, well, I actually didn't get to attend it because I had COVID at the time uh, after working on it for no. eight months. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's really a bummer. Um, but he's like, my guys, they are saying that these people are having a great time. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and it would be probably hard for us to get the ball. It's hard for us to get fundraising chairs anyway. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I know you know. So <laughs> the other issue we had this year is that positives was at the same time. Um, now, I happen to be on all three PTOs. And so next year, next year, we're going to, I think p positives was also successful. So we're actually going to hopefully do two check writing campaigns for them to get on an every other year schedule with Dover. Get back to that. It used to be on that, and the and the um, and COVID switched us. Um, so that's why. But next year we'll have more social events for parents that maybe is like a fifty dollar entry fee, and forty of that goes to the school. Yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit more of that. Okay. And then you mentioned the we don't make as much from the directories anymore. Is that because they're digital? Yes. Why don't we go back to print? Because it's not as efficient, and every at all three. All four PTOs now go digital, but the one thing that we are going to do is we're going to sell ads for it. There's an ad space. That's where we used to make all the money. And then for the last couple of years during the pandemic, we didn't really, well, I wasn't a part of it, but ads were not sold. So now we're trying to find like two, and we got great donors for this year. So we're trying to find two kind of signature donors who would be, then when you open up the directory, you'll see that the directory is sponsored by so-and-so real estate, for example. I've just heard from several people that they they wish that we still had a print I know. version of it, so I just wasn't <laughs> sure. If it made more money, why wouldn't we it's go always stay in your car. <laughs> right. Yeah, if people had it, like, in the, <laughs> if you, if you yeah, feel no, I will just say. I'm not feeling strongly about it. I've just had other people bring it up. I will just say that having a child, having a child in each of the, in three of, I don't have one in Pine Hill, three of the four schools. Yeah. I really, really like the electronic. It's like so easy. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, my kids think I'm a creep because I'm always looking people up, especially as a new person. Okay, I'm going to keep going because I don't want to take up your whole meeting. Um, we had an amazing time at Silverwood Farm in Sherbourne, um, raised over $70,000. We had, as you can see on the top left, a lot of sponsors and a lot of, the other reason why we don't do it every year, just so you know, is we, it, we, the auction is a lot of items, and it's hard to get all those items every year donated. Okay, moving on. Next year, we're able to fund about $95,000 in projected expenses. We are going to have new fundraisers that we hope will add about $20,000 through like a 5K. Um, like I said, we're going to try and do directory sales. We're going to do more gear and the art project. And so each of those should garner about three to $5,000 to kind of help us not have to tap into our rainy day fund. And then this is our budget for next year. So like I said, we are potentially operating at a loss, but the income from the budget surplus from this year will help cover that. And then this is much more detailed. I, I don't know that you want to go through all this. You know that, um, this is our sources of income. If you go to the next page, you'll see that this is our expenses. You can see that CE is going to be almost $50,000 next year. Um, and then this is our board for next year that will get voted on next Monday night. Wow. Well, this coming Monday night. Great group of people. Um, and we're really excited. And that's it. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. So Thank you for all you do. Thank I really you appreciate so it. Thank you so much, Jen Lee. I mean, we are so grateful to the PTO for all the wonderful work that you do for Chickering students, teachers, and families. And um, the auction was a phenomenal time this year, and I'm <laughs> so glad it. that it was a phenomenal <laughs> success as well. Really grateful to everybody who gave of their time um, in order to put on that fantastic event, and also to those who made donations to support all of these wonderful curriculum enrichment, yes. teacher support, and community events and outreach programs that the PTO uh, is so kind to put on for us. So thank you. Thank you. And thank I just want to, before I leave, I just want to say Deb, Jim, the entire staff are so supportive of us. They answer so many of our questions. They meet with us regularly. It's a real strong partnership. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank, while she's here, thank Dr. Reinemann and Jim 
and our teacher, Christine Atkinson, for all the time they give us. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. This brings us to our uh, superintendent's report. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm going to be quick because a lot of this is going to be covered. We have a week from tonight our joint school committee's uh, meeting. Uh, but I do want to talk about a few things. One is, um, I want to congratulate you had 165 students graduate from Dover Sherborne High School under cloudy skies last Thursday evening. <laughs> and I said to the uh, filled with parents, family, you know, community members, um, and I have been to a lot of graduations and I said this to them, your student speakers were exceptional. Mm -hmm. You know, spoke uh, from the heart uh, to their you know, uh, fellow uh, graduates. Uh, spoke about the loss of, you know, one of their graduates, Owen Bingham, um, whose mom accepted his diploma posthumously. Uh, but uh, again, to uh, Principal John Smith, Assistant Principal uh, Ann Dever Keegan, it was just exceptional and very proud of, you know, looking at, of course, bringing back these kinds of ceremonies, mm -hmm. which of course is the expectation, you know, for our students here. Uh, but, you know, the, the songs, as I said, the tributes, it was just a really wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. So I know you know that's what's to come, even if your students are presently just at your party. That being said, we're preparing our fifth graders at both schools, uh, Chickering and Pine Hill, to come up and say hello to Dover Children Middle School. Uh, and that'll be coming up, I believe, this Friday. Um, so we have a couple of opportunities. I'm sure they're very excited. I'm sure there's a lot of emotion uh, as far as leaving and, and uh, transitioning up here. but. But that is part of the process. Um, I want to remind everybody, uh, and also we have our eighth graders, of course, that will be uh, on Friday transitioning up to the high school. We have a wonderful ceremony planned where they're leaving the middle school and actually meeting the new principal and their leadership team, circling around, and parents being able to come and also see that you know, transition. Um, your last day of school, I keep saying, is uh, June 22nd. It is a half day for students. I want to remind everybody that that week, Monday, is Juneteenth. It is a federal and state holiday. On Monday, uh, the 21st is a full day and a half a day uh, on the 22nd. Uh, what's happening for our upcoming joint school committee meeting? We finally, and I can't believe this is going to be our last meeting of the year, and we've talked about a lot of this for a long time. So things on the agenda are looking at our equity audit findings. We looked at our central office and organizational study and um, reviewing it now, but a blueprint for you know, years to come as to how we can employ some best practices. We also have a communications update. You know, I've been struggling as my time winds down you know, to uh, work with um, a communications consultant who came on board. I know we've introduced you to Dana Lanham. And we are uh, working on the communication survey and sharing with you some of the results. So we did have parents respond uh, to the survey. Also, we're hoping to have, we're feverishly putting together um, the so-called district report card. And this will be, again, our first time doing this. So this is just something that will continue to grow and uh, we'll share. So I know <coughs> Principal Reinemann and her team have provided content, have provided photos, as have all schools uh, in Dover Sherbrooke. Um, also, we're going to be talking about an ending newsletter. And I know that's something that Superintendent-Elect uh, is going to continue. Parents want to hear not only from their principals in their schools, but also from the central office team as to, as to obviously what's happening. We met with uh, our website uh, partners, uh, Final Site, to look at something that's been on the books for a number of years to really update your website. So all of these things are happening. I get overwhelmed when I think about what's ahead for, for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you also are going to have a presentation on, and I know you have brought this up, on research and renaming of a holiday. So we're actually going to have grade three students who have done, I believe, a video of some of their research, uh, and they've done letters the to the school committee. So we'll be able to share that and, and at least start the discussion. Uh, so as you can see, we have a lot happening at our final meeting. Um, and I have one more thing I do want to talk about to end with, but we also have, and I want the public to know, um, as I leave, um, when I came on board, I think we've done, I'm trying to count them how many trainings as school committees, 
So we have our last one coming up on Thursday evening, if people can make it, on uh, June 9th. And it is about setting goals for your superintendent, which you will do every year, and evaluating, which is, of course, one of the major jobs of, of our school committee. So we're doing the training with Dorothy Presser from uh, the Mass Association for School Committees, MASC. So looking forward to closing out the year and really checking off kind of the boxes of what we thought we would do. So you have put in hours of professional development this year. And I do want to end with this. When you talk about safety and security, and you know how excited we were as we felt that the pandemic was winding down, and I'm not sure how I feel about the pandemic winding down. But as you look at us, you know, we, we are able to meet in person. So this is a plus, not without understanding that there are some risks. Mm -hmm. So that being said, we were excited as a group to start to focus on things that you had focused on as, on, as a district for a long time. One of the most important things, and we've been talking about this during the school year, and every time we seem to get ready with safety and security to do a drill, something would happen, and it was Omicron. It was not the right time to do it. But in fact, we moved forward. We did training through Synergy with Jason Brennan, who presented to you a couple of months ago, and I know that's recorded. I would encourage parents to go and listen to what I thought was not only an excellent presentation, I know you've got an opportunity to ask a lot of questions, and I'm sure you have a lot more questions, as all of us do right now. <laughs> but that being said, we have trained staff as superintendent, uh, my whole team. We were in classrooms. We were learning what it means to barricade, how many minutes we have. And, and I'm here to tell you that I will go into, when I say much more detail, it's not about detail, but it is talking to the public at the joint meeting about what we are doing with safety and security. That being said, we have had discussion, and I just am overwhelmed by looking at what happened in Buffalo in mid-May. You know, people going to a supermarket. You know, looking at that as a hate crime. You know, looking at, and I'm going to save the school for last, you know, looking at just last week a hospital setting, a medical building. You know, four people. You know, again, we can talk about mental health. You know, we can talk about all of those things that I think all of us have opinions. But when we had the situation in Uvalde, Texas, I mean, uh, not that we haven't seen that before, unfortunately. And it's very hard to tell parents that we believe your children are secure each and every day, but we are doing everything that we can. We have excellent relationships with your law enforcement. We were meeting with them today. You know, we continue to open those lines of communication. They continue to do trainings that we believe in here. You know, I'm pleased to be in Massachusetts. I'm pleased for our children. I'm sorry that we have to go through these drills from our very youngest students to our oldest students. Mm -hmm. But I have faith in our system. We'll continue to focus on little things. You know, I met with the business administrator today as I wind <coughs> down, you know, looking at what we need to do for our classrooms to have things in the classrooms with inventory every year when we start, look at those trainings, hopefully in years to come. And I know our state was looking at at one point when you talk about fire drills, we are under mandates by law as to when you have to have them when school begins, how many you have to have. And they started to look at that for lockdowns, safety drills, shelter in place. So we'll look at those best practices. We already have recommendations as to how to start the year and how to finish the year and how to continually do this professional development. So you have a great partner in Synergy. You have great partnerships with your families. Um, with our law enforcement, with our community partners, meaning other police stations, that practice to respond if we need them in a time of emergency. So um, again, I, we're, we're doing the best we can. I know parents were asking. I actually reached out to families with my team. We put together um, a message to families. If we continue to do that, unfortunately, with every mass shooting that we're seeing, you know, I feel it's going to lose the impact that we wanted it to have. I will also tell you just as I end, um, that morning I want you to know that I had called both police chiefs in Dover and Sherbourne. And Superintendent-elect was heading over to her neck of the woods in Sherbourne to Pine Hill. I went over to Chickering that morning. The police joined us just as a presence, you know, outside of their vehicles, not directing traffic, but, you know, having conversations with parents, welcoming kids, and it was so good that it was routine for us. Kids were coming to school, excited to, to leave, you know, I don't want to say excited to leave you as parents, but <laughs> happy to come into the building, happy to, to have the day. Um, I walked around uh, the building. 
um, Dr. Reinemann and her team, and you know, I happened to be at Chickering that day. So, so again, I, I think you are doing an excellent job. As a school district, we can always improve and we'll continue to do that. Okay. So that is my report. Thank you, Kathy, and, and we look forward to next week's Joint School Committee meeting with further discussion on a lot of really, really uh, important topics. So thank you for that. Okay. Are there questions or comments for Kathy from committee members? No. I just want to express my gratitude for your stewardship this year. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Very yeah. challenging time yeah. in education. Lots of different. It's been a great adventure and journey, and uh, I can't wait to come back and see the, the next check just to come. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Reinemann. Good evening, all. It's nice to see you. Uh, our, my report this evening is brief, I think, fortunately, for our time. Uh, we, I bring back to you the uh, handbook revisions and the school improvement plan and uh, some updates on the things that have been going on the last few weeks since we've seen you. Certainly, we had field day, best day ever, <laughs> best day of the year. We had a fantastic event. Um, we had every parent who offered to volunteer, come in and help out. We just, why not? Everybody come in. So we had over 200 parents helping out at um, the events, lots of people, great weather, a spectacular day by all. Um, and we continue on with our good goodbyes in the classrooms as we start to close down and think about transitioning. Uh, so there's, the tears are beginning. It's okay, it's all good. Um, and looking forward to a break for everyone, some rest and relaxation as we enter into the summer. I'm um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Questions? Thank you, Dr. Ryan. We'll, we'll be back to you shortly. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for hosting PTO. They did a much better job explaining the auction and the fundraising than I could have, so thank you. Done the warrant report. Yes, uh, so you have the warrants um, that they were actually quite a bit of warrants uh, that have been uh, processed and approved since you last met just three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to thank Liz. I think have you had your inaugural sign? I did. I did. Very exciting. <laughs> exactly. So thank you for uh, taking on that responsibility for us. And again, as for new members, Gloria, we always have uh, an opportunity to go to, to town hall with Liz and look at the warrants, or we always keep copies in our central office if you're just you know curious about. Yeah. what all the expenditures that are paid um, through. But we do bring forward at least uh, what fund was hit and, and what the warrants mm -hmm. looked on a, on a, a every other week basis that we send things over to the town of Dover. Um, I'll just jump right into um, the financial report. So there's not a really a lot of new information report because when I was doing this, I'm like, wait, I just did one of, as of May 16th. So <laughs> not a whole lot of extra time. Um, and so your, uh, what I did do is just sort of um, add a paragraph about sort of summarizing the year now that we are two weeks away. Um, everything's staying pretty much the same. As you know, we have some negative variances in salary because of the additional staffing that we did for level servicing. Um, we did we did move expenses from the general fund for some of the new positions that we piloted, um, and so those are your numbers now reflect some things being moved to both uh, special ed grants and some ESSER, uh, which we have for you tonight. On the expenditure side, we're right at where we need to be. We're over just a little bit on out of district. Um, that's actually a pretty good number for us that we. We're within $100,000 of what we had budgeted. Knowing that um, we have the whole circuit breaker to fall back on, you see that we'll be returning about $975,000 to the town. So that's circuit breaker money that will go into their free cash, uh, but that's our safety net in case we do run into um, any situations. Any questions on the monthly report? Um, what I've included also is sort of a projection of your special revenue and revolving funds. Um, as of June 30th, I always feel like it takes to bring it out in July, I mean, in, in September when we sort of know where we are. Um, so this is just a summary of uh, the various revolving funds. I'll highlight that um, the building rental, um, you know, we used to replace um, over the summer the uh, music room carpet, which I think looks fabulous. And we did um, use some money from the building fund to um, upgrade our security fob system at Chickering and Pine Hills next, but once we do that, all the schools will be on the same sort of FOB system, uh, which I think will be beneficial to all of our staff that go across the buildings. Um, we're lucky in that food services, as you know, it's it's a free lunch for everyone, and so that's been very profitable for us. It's increased participation, and we actually get paid more 
in their, uh, the federal reimbursement than we would on school lunch okay. prices. So it's obviously helped our fund balance. Uh, mm -hmm. We will be bringing forward to all three school committees um, at the joint meeting actually a price increase. Uh, we're on a three-year cycle, so believe it or not, it's three years. Um, and so we're going to continue with that pricing increase. Obviously, food prices, labor have gone up. We're still waiting to see what's going to happen with free lunch. There's still a chance it will extend. It's still up in the air right now. So we want to be prepared um, mm -hmm. just in case. So that will um, impact your food service uh, balances for next year. Um, a new schedule that um, I wanted to share with the committee because we've talked a lot about the ESSER grants. So you have an ESSER 1, which was the very first grant that we uh, received um, probably back. You could have used that in fiscal year 20 if we needed to. Um, and then we, or 21, we've used it this year. Um, and then ESSER 2 and ESSER 3. So ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 are the ones that we applied for this year. ESSER 3 was the much larger one that we um, approved in October. Um, and that is on our website, that whole uh, uh, budget application. So for ESSER 1, we really targeted the summer services. So we definitely had more targeted summer services this summer for tutoring um, at both elementaries and we used that obviously that wasn't budgeted for, so it was a great use of ESSER 1. Uh, we purchased um, in both ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 um, quite a bit of uh, ELA materials for the reading workshop, about 15 or 16,000. We were able to, to put towards um, funding from the uh, ESSER. Um, we continued our Zoom video services, which actually for a district was about twelve or $13,000. So that's Dover share that you see, but obviously we used um, ESSER for that. And then we did have to buy, um, pre us getting all the masks from the state, but also the state to give us a pediatric mask. There was a point in time that we did have to buy a supply. So uh, we used the ESSER fund for that. ESSER 2, similar, um, that's where you're going to see some SEL and academic assessment tools, which includes Panorama. We'll be talking more about Panorama um, next year. Panorama will continue to be funded with ESSER uh, going forward for next year. So as you see, it's nice that we have some funding left. Mm -hmm. um, ESSER 3, when we created that grant, we knew we had um, some technology needs by bringing everyone back, and we had moved things all around. So we were able to use that grant to purchase um, a little over $66,000 of Chromebooks and iPads that we needed to fill in our classrooms because uh, now we've basically, oh, you know, during the pandemic went to a one-to-one -one situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so between uh, some technology that we had to buy when we went remote and our needs coming back, uh, we've actually used federal COVID money to really get us in a good place for inventory. Um, so you see ESSER 2, we have about $85,000 that we can roll into next year. That does need to be expended in fiscal year 23. ESSER 3, we have $104,000 left. We have until September of 24. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice safety net for as things come up, um, you know, we, we, and we don't budget it for, that we find needs for. That's what this money's for, and that's what we've been using it for. So mm -hmm. nothing that's continuing operations is all those one-time things that we need to just get us through. Um, you know, as we continue through the pandemic. Uh, but I wanted to share that with you just so you had a feel of sort of how we were spending those grants. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Don? The only question I have is how do those grants work? Do we receive the cash for it or we get reimbursed for? Yes, so no, you, um, you re get reimbursed. Okay. Yeah, so we do monthly uh, grant draws based on what our expenditures are. And, um, and this is just for uh, Dover, Chickering or just for Chickering? Okay. Yep, this is just for Dover, the Dover district. Colleen, did you have a question as well? Yeah, um, I'm wondering about the testing, um, the COVID testing program. I know we've been sending home test kits um, and, you know, we've been using them when if there's a symptom and that kind of thing. And it, it seems to me it might be best practice for, you know, I don't know what the situation will be, but it's only a few months away, but to keep the tests encourage people to have the tests on hand for if there's symptoms and mm -hmm. you know and if we're helping distribute that then that helps people feel good about oh let me test my kid before I send them to school let me use a school test so they are expensive um, you know my son got COVID you know a month ago and we we blew through all of our tests that had been coming home but we hadn't you know so it was really helpful to have them on hand when the symptoms were arose so um, that helped us test my daughter days in a row and it just sent her to school with a clear conscience. So 
you know, I think if there's a use for these funds, I think going forward, it really it feels prudent. Right. And that's great. Yeah. So we have these funds have, right in all three right. districts. If we, because the state's not going to sort of do the same testing support that they've done this year. Right. Um, so we will, but you can purchase the test off a right. state contract and get a better rate than if you go to the drugstore. Yeah. Right. So that'll be yeah. something that we'll have ability to do. I will say we've yeah. got a pretty good supply. Yeah. Um, because they've continued the testing, they've continued sending us the kits. Oh, for every okay. week so we've been sort of stockpiling them a little bit so that we probably have some to get us through the fall and then we can pivot to purchase if we need to great so i think that again is why it's nice to have those funds available yeah. for things the unexpected and the things that'll keep us in business great. um through next year because i you know it seems like COVID is going to sort of be with us can i ask a yeah. piggyback question on that because mm -hmm. i was reading about the <clears throat> that the school can now buy at their collective bargaining rate for mm -hmm. the, could we, even if we can't give them away for free, could we sell them to our families at that rate? Like at that? I don't, I don't think that they we would, like, we would sell, like, we don't really, that's not our right. business, but if we purchase them, we feel like they're necessary for our families. So we, so can we just would give them, them to our families. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And I want to remind families, you know, the reason we have additional, at first things seemed to be getting better and we had put them out there for families. We didn't know when the state was going to stop. Right. And we saw what happened. Yeah. So families, it was interesting, families said, no, I want them now. So yeah. we kept, yeah. you know, reaching out to them. Um, but as, as Dawn said, it, and families took advantage, but we do have some, thank goodness, that we're able to uh, still use going into the next school year. It's so helpful. Like, yeah, I is. really yeah. bank on the ones that come home with, like, yeah. seasonal yeah. allergy, everything. It's yeah. just really yeah. helpful. And any families, you, you can still do your pickups. Um, right. They're, they're actually allocated for every week. Um, it's just that people don't are, are giving them when they need them versus picking them up every week because the testing is a, scenario is a little different. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Don? Great. All right, thank you, Don. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to the family handbook changes. Deb, back to you. Uh, is this <laughs> the same as what we reviewed at our last meeting during our first read? It is. I took out a repeat sentence that Don caught, and otherwise it was unchanged. All right. Um, in the interest of time, uh, do, do folks have questions or comments? In that event, um, since we this is our second read, um, I would like to invite a motion to approve <coughs> the family handbook changes for 2022-23. You can approve. And split. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Excellent. Motion carries. Um, we now have the school improvement plan. Deb. Do you want to share anything with us? Absolutely. Uh, the goals have not changed. <laughs> I've uh, added in more details for some of the categories that we were talking about before. Uh, worked with the school improvement, uh, excuse me, the school advisory council, thanks to them. And um, we are interested in the one thing that's different um, is looking at a school civics or citizenship mm -hmm. piece, which we're very excited about. Uh, what does it mean to be a member of the Chickering community and how do we care for ourselves in our community? So it's picking up on several threads that we've had throughout the year, um, but pulling them together in a school-wide initiative and it fits nicely into that third one, which is deliciously wide and squishy for a room like that. So uh, we're getting some time together this summer to look at uh, what does that mean from the morning announcements and raising and lowering the flag to ushering at a school assembly. And everything in between. So we're excited to bring that, begin to bring that forward next year. But otherwise, the school improvement plan is the same as when we read it last meeting. Great. Thank you, Deb. Are there questions or comments for Deb about the school improvement plan? Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, this is our second read of that as well. So I'd like to invite a motion to approve the 2022-23 school improvement plan. Yeah, motion to approve. Thank you, Colleen. Is there a second? No second. Thank you, Goldie. All in favor, or I should say any discussion? All in favor? Great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have the May 16th, 2022 Dover School Committee minutes as our consent agenda this evening. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Sure. Motion to second. Yeah. <laughs> any discussion? Anyone have any? Feedback or changes to suggest? 
All right. All in favor? Excellent. Um, and you will see in our packets, we have our subcommittee assignments for the next year um, for members' information, and we can now fill in our chair and secretary roles as well. So, all right. I think that brings us to the conclusion of our business for this evening. So absent anything further, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Colleen, all in favor? Excellent. Thank you so much.